He's called the Iron Horse. Strong, steady, a soaring career, an unmatched streak, a devastating diagnosis. He was a man from humble beginnings, whose strong bat and even stronger character preserved him in both the history books and the hearts of baseball fans. This is the story of Lou Gehrig, a man of steel strength and iron will. Born to German immigrants in New York City on June 19, 1903, Lou Gehrig was the only child of four to survive. He was strong even then, weighing in at nearly 14 pounds at birth. His father, poor in health, struggled to find work. His mother worked hard as a maid to make ends meet. Lou Gehrig often helped her by running errands and folding laundry. Gehrig also played baseball. In high school, his team, the best in New York City, traveled to Cubs Park, now Wrigley Field, for the high school championships against the best high school teams in Chicago. In front of 10,000 fans, in the ninth inning, Lou Gehrig, a six-foot, 180-pound, 17-year-old, cranked a grand slam out of the park to seal the win. Ironically, though, he was recruited to play football at Columbia University, while also studying to become an engineer. He joined the baseball team as well. And on an afternoon in April of 1923, Gehrig struck out 17 batters. A Yankee scout was there. He'd been watching him and believed him to be the next Babe Ruth. Not for his pitching, but for his bat. This young man could hit the ball. The same scout watched him 10 days later when he hit a 450-foot home run, launching it onto 116th and Broadway. Lou Gehrig signed a contract with the Yankees two days later and left Columbia. He played a couple of years in the minors and got off to a slow start for the Yankees. His breakout season came in 1926, culminating with the Yankees' World Series appearance, where they lost three games to four. The next year, Lou was part of Murderer's Row, the famed baseball lineup of the 27 Yankees, which also included Babe Ruth. His stats that year are some of the highest of any batter in history. The tandem of Gehrig and Ruth together out-homered every team except one in baseball that year. Gehrig kept hitting, and the Yankees kept winning. In total, he played for 17 years in the major leagues. He was an all-star seven consecutive times, a triple crown winner once, an MVP twice in the American League, and part of six world championship teams. He averaged an RBI in each game he played. He had a career 340 batting average, 632 slugging average, and a 447 on-base average. The record that Lou is perhaps most known for is that famous streak. He was in the starting lineup for 2,130 consecutive games. He endured countless fractures in his hands. He got sick. He got beamed in the head. He was plagued with back issues. And yet, he played on, earning his nickname, the Iron Horse. But in 1938, things were different. Gehrig was different. He fell below 300 for the first time in 13 years. Usual home runs became fly balls. A teammate noticed Lou Gehrig shuffling his feet on the golf course. In spring training the following season, he collapsed. Sports writer James Kahn wrote, I think there's something wrong with him. Physically wrong, I mean. It goes far beyond ball playing. On May 2nd, 1939, Gehrig took himself out of the lineup, telling his coach it was for the good of the team. The game announcer, upon receiving the roster, announced to the crowd, 
Ladies and gentlemen, Lou Gehrig's consecutive streak of 2,130 games played has ended. The Detroit Tiger fans honored him with a standing ovation as he sat on the bench in tears. He would remain the captain that season, but never took the field again. Something was indeed wrong, really wrong in fact. As Gehrig's health quickly declined, a visit to Mayo Clinic revealed a devastating diagnosis. Gehrig had amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or ALS. His diagnosis came on his 36th birthday. He was told he had less than three years to live, and his body would experience increasing paralysis, along with difficulty speaking and swallowing. He retired two days after the news went public, in June. The Yankees rushed to honor the legend, having a Lou Gehrig Appreciation Day on July 4th, 1939. His number four jersey was retired, making him the first professional athlete to receive that honor. Lou Gehrig, not one to revel in the spotlight, didn't want to speak to the sold-out Yankee Stadium, but the crowd chanted for him, and he delivered what has become one of the most iconic addresses in sports. He said, Today, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. I have been in ballparks for 17 years and have never received anything but kindness and encouragement from you fans. He went on to praise his teammates, his coaches, his wife, and even the opposing team for their thoughtfulness. He closed with, I might have been given a bad break, but I've got an awful lot to live for. The crowd honored Gehrig with a two minute long standing ovation, chanting, we love you Lou. There were hugs from teammates and many tears. The New York Times called it one of the most touching scenes ever witnessed on a baseball field. In December of that year, he was elected to the National Baseball Hall of Fame in a special election. For the next year and a half, Lou worked as the New York City Parole Commissioner, quietly and humbly turning down other lucrative opportunities. He believed in the power of parole and wanted to work in public service. True to his nature, he did not want his work to be covered by the media. One young man that he met and helped was Thomas Rocco Barbella, also known as Rocky Graziano, whose life is portrayed in the famous Rocky movies. Rocco credits Lou with straightening him out. Gehrig died on June 2nd, 1941, just before his 38th birthday. All around New York City, in major league ballparks, flags flew at half-staff in his honor. The love of his life, his wife Eleanor, never remarried. She said, I had the best of it. I would not have traded two minutes of my life with that man for 40 years with another. She spent the next 43 years supporting ALS research. The life of Lou Gehrig is remembered and honored in a myriad of ways. The Yankees dedicated a monument to Gehrig in Yankee Stadium a month after his passing. It reads, a man, a gentleman, and a great ball player whose amazing record of 2,130 consecutive games should stand for all time. Today, the Lou Gehrig Memorial Award continues to be given out each year to the MLB player who best personifies the character and integrity of Lou Gehrig both on and off the field. His alma mater, Columbia University, has an ALS treatment and research center called the Eleanor and Lou Gehrig ALS Center. And in March of 2021, MLB declared that June 2nd would be Lou Gehrig Day to honor the great baseball legend. Lou Gehrig's legacy is that of grace under pressure. He was humble and hardworking never succumbing to the natural rivalry and jealousy that can exist between athletes and competitors. His iron will propelled him to play in 2,130 consecutive games, and his strength of steel allowed him to stare his death sentence in the face and call himself blessed. In a day and age where we're blinded by some athletes' egos, and where entitlement rages out of control for some, 
the legacy of Lou Gehrig shines even brighter. Work hard, stay humble, celebrate your teammates, and go out a champion. Thanks for watching Heartbeats on the Sports Beat. If you enjoyed this video, please click to subscribe to our channel and hit that thumbs up button. Be sure to tap the notification bell so you'll be one of the first to know when we post our next inspiring sports story.